everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, I hope weather is getting better all around the world. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's not the case, but in every place, but uh, here where I'm based, uh, it's uh, spring is coming, kicking in. Uh, with, with spring, also the Earth Day is kicking in as well. And that's particularly exciting for this cohort of people, because uh, as you know, we are gathered here to do some experiments uh, for in the next week and the, the week after until the end of the month uh, in honor of our the biggest place that we share earth so we are we are really the, the earth day is really around the corner uh, we had a few sessions where we had some inspiring speakers and uh, now it's our time to speak uh, everybody every everybody who is here uh, to share some of the ideas that we are planning to experiment with uh, during the next weeks, because uh, that's the essence of this initiative anyway. Uh, so we get our hands dirty and then we share experiences and lessons that we learned. Uh, as you can see, we are in the middle of this process. I don't know if you see my mouse, but we're in the middle of this process now when we're sharing uh, our plans. And the way, the format that we're going to do now is uh, I'll give the word to everybody who signed up to share ideas. And I will ask you to be as short as possible, like, or not as short as possible, or three, four minutes. And then we can have five minutes for reflection, ideas uh, like of, of some of the other attendees that can um, either ask questions or give uh, suggestions. But yeah, in order to be, uh, we have few people in the list, so in, I would keep I will, I, will, I will try to keep as possible conversation short, unfortunately, but uh, you are free to continue them, of course, in any kind of mean, but it has to be, we have to keep it fair for everyone. So, and that's the last thing I will say, just please keep your camera on uh, and mute yourself uh, if you're not speaking. Uh, for the comments and reflection, please use the raise hand option or uh, write in the chat. That's also possible if you don't want to speak uh, with some ideas uh, or links towards the idea of people that uh, of someone uh, plan. And uh, yeah, be up to the point, supportive and helpful. Uh, the idea is really to have this classroom environment. So don't stress, keep smiling and uh, let's Let's keep that going. Uh, that said, I would like to invite our first speaker uh, for today, Blair. So Blair, if you want, you can just take the lead, unmute yourself, share your screen, and tell us something more about what you're planning to do. All right, great, thank you. Thanks for having me today. And Ryan, I don't know if, if you are going to share the, the National Park info that we sent over to you. I said it's Ryan, he's much more high tech than I am. So I could just oh, talk and I didn't, I, I didn't know I was doing it. So can you um, just uh, give a brief intro of yourself and I'll cue that up for you? Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, in our district, uh, okay. we have two major corridors at about a, a little over a mile each, surrounded by a bedroom community. And for years and years and years, we've walked by this little piece of city owned land. It's literally 30 by 80 feet two beautiful eucalyptus trees on it. Um, it backs up to a, a gated uh, neighborhood and nothing's really been done. There's been a lot of talk about it. So finally, when you stare at something long enough, you get an idea because we try to go around. Um, we recently just finished our rogue street sign project where we designed signs that look like par no parking signs, but we put song lyrics and poems and stuff. And there's, we had 55 designs. We put them all over. And we tease the neighborhood, they have to go take a walk and find it. So it's, they get out, they look for these, they take pictures and they share it. So that's, that's that. So when that was done, we said, well, what's next? So we looked at this piece of land. We said, you know, um, wouldn't that be a great national park? We're going to call it the Bixby Knowles National Park. And we went on the site and we said, wow, we could, if we just cleaned it, stripped it, uh, put plants that would attract butterflies, put, some, put a pine tree in. All right, great. Here we go. Now we get caught up. And now you can see it. Um, we could turn this nothing into a something. Uh, there is a bus stop right on the, along the corridor uh, that, and Ryan, let's see. Uh, if you want to scroll here, just as we can see everything. 
What do you see? Can you scroll it down a little bit so we can see the whole? Uh... Well, like zoom in on it. Well, uh, yeah. Well. Uh... Okay, hold on. Let me see how to do that. All right. Or just scroll the page down. Okay, well, I'll keep talking because I don't want to take up the whole day here. So you'll see this little plot of land. It's a nothing. It's got dead oleanders all over it. Uh, it also has a tree stump buried in those oleanders. Uh, okay, great. There it is. Let's look at that picture. So you can see um, it backs up to the house. There's a beautiful wall. So here's you're looking from the street, looking at the brand new or soon to be national park. <laughs> and um, what we want to do is we're going to go in there. Uh, I, first thing I did is I called in our landscaper that I used. We said, take a look at this project. Can you rake it? Can you treat those eucalyptus trees? They seem to be bothered by bugs. He said, we could treat it. Not a problem. We might trim it back a little bit, get the tree suckers off. Can you clear out the volunteer palm? Can you take the oleanders out? And can we put California native plants throughout this? But we want to go bigger with that. We're going to put a stream through it. And we're going to put two hiking trails. But the stream will be gray, decomposed granite. We have a little bridge. We'll have a little six-foot bridge over it. We're going to have a visitor center. Uh, we will have a list of species, just like you would in any national park. So we could say, oh, well, here are the roly polies, and here are the um, here's the crickets, and here's the so and so. You'll find. Um, yeah, here's our inspiration. So this national park sign is what is really used throughout the United States for real national park, but we're just gonna make our own and we'll put it in with concrete footing, stick it in the ground. And then we plan a, a, um, a grand opening ribbon cutting. We'll have, the staff will be dressed as park rangers. Uh, we've even gone down the way, we'll have a little booklet, again, that talks about the species here. Um, yeah, go ahead and keep going. We're gonna put this sign here on the gated. Uh, and of course, what's a national park without wildlife and we will have wildlife. Uh, Bigfoot feed, of course, we're gonna have, gotta have bears and deer and um, uh, raccoons. So, and scroll down just a little bit more, Ryan. You can, there's your bridge, a little six foot bridge over the, the running stream, which will be a DG. So, uh, and on the bus stop itself, there are two concrete slabs that hold just the metal piece of the, bu of the bus stop. We're gonna wrap them like they're split logs. So there'll be two split logs, paint that brown. So you could sit on the on the log bench as you're looking back at the park. Um, and there you have it. So do we have permission? Well, we got a lot of good ideas. Uh, we've gone to our landscaper to get to do it. Uh, we've called in from the public works, the public service department. And I said, all right, you're under this is you have to be sworn to secrecy here. Can mm -hmm. we get any help from public works to send a crew in here to trim, sweep, pull this out and on, on, on uh, cover the picnic area. The picnic area is the tree stump. So you will, we're gonna, we will just level it. So you have a visitor center, you have a picnic area, you have a stream, you're gonna have walking trails, you're gonna have wildlife, you're gonna have signage. And if you, if you come join us, you know, on, the, on walking sticks, people buy the medallions and they stick it on their walking sticks when they go to national parks. Well, we, we've designed our own. So we, we've taken it way down the rabbit hole. Um, we have a neighborhood cleanup day scheduled for next Saturday. So we're going to call for volunteers actually to come in and help rake it, trim it, clear it. And then uh, we've, we've gone to the parks and rec department and said, oh, we could use some irrigation help. Wouldn't it be great if you could help us with irrigation? Um, wouldn't it be great if you helped uh, get a grant for the plants? But even if they don't, even if they don't, even if, they, if there's a whole, if the bureaucracy starts, we'll just go in there on, on, at 7 a.m. one morning and make it happen. And then we'll set the grand opening. We'll invite the councilman. He can cut the ribbon. He'll be greeted by park rangers. He'll get the photo ops with the bears. And there you go. I've got a national park in the neighborhood. It's 0 0.05 acres. Wow. And there well, you have it, folks. That's a fantastic project, Blair. And uh, I think maybe the first vacant lot to national park conversion that I've heard of in the placemaking networks. Um, can you just mention where you are and your position because you're, you're in a unique position to be able to, to administer funds and turn this, this idea and this um, activation during Earth Week of a cleanup of a lot into something so much more? Could you just give us a sentence or two on that? And sure, just um, my relationships with the city are critical because 
we do so much to improve the corridors. You know, it's tree trimming and watering and planting and um, the placemaking stuff, the signage, uh, the events we do. And we just have everybody as partners from the public service and parks and Long Beach Transit. Um, so we just start to go to everybody and say, wouldn't you want to be uh, as in, in this, uh, on the special project? And everybody says, yeah, we'd love to, we'll just, but um, we do uh, our own cleanup every day. We have uh, somebody's out there picking up trash. We report um, graffiti and we're always, you know, up and down the street all the time. And we have funds that um, through, it's now former redevelopment. It came from a, a piece of property taxes in the county, sent to the city they collected and, and they would give to us. So we use that for some of this. But when we put the call on, we just did to do the cleanup, we will get overrun with volunteers. Like we've got a, um, I'll show you this. I'll just hold this up real quick, this is old school. But this is just a list of the locations where we want volunteers to go and, and, and we'll send them to, um, Oh, can we do that again, Ryan? Or, uh, let me, let's see where are we? Yeah, All right, can you see? It's just a list like where we're gonna send everybody, uh, including if you see my little note, National Park. Um, hey Blair, is it city owned land? Who owns that land? That yeah, vacant lot? So that's the beauty okay. of it. Okay. It's city owned. So what I know is that the city does not have the time, wherewithal, staff, and they don't even have awareness that this little piece is there until I poke them about it. So usually what we do, we align the troops, we go do the project and go, wow, look how, wasn't that wonderful? Look how great this is. Then I write to the city manager and send him pictures of it. And he just goes, all right, th hey, thumbs up, you know? Um, and then everybody calms down. There's no like, uh, uh, because it's, it's 30 by 80 in a 50 square mile city. I mean, really, there's gonna be an issue with it. So that's why I said, if you're going to say kicking. We'll just say thanks anyway. We'll wait two days and we'll just go do the project. All right. Well, we look forward to hearing more about this project as it evolves. So thank you so much for creating it and for participating in this. And uh, we really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll send you photos as soon as it or as the evolution goes. Awesome. I know um, next up was uh, going to be Tina Vilfon up in uh, Copenhagen. Is she here, Todor, or should we move on to the next speaker? I, I, I don't see her, so maybe we can just move to the next one, is Jeff Roll. But I is he here as well? Here yet. Um, so we would go to Priscilla, Priscilla is here. Yeah. Priscilla, were you hoping to present this? Hi, yes, Ryan. Um, I don't know if you got my my document. Oh, let me check. Did you send it to me this morning or yeah, or I sent it to you okay. a while ago. And also um my my friend that's in Mexico trying to uh to join us was not able to come in, so I was kind of trying to work with him right now and see if he could get in still. Um, okay. But if not, it's okay. Um, I can go next if. Um, well, I know Steven's here. Maybe if Steven wants to go next then instead. Mm -hmm. And then we'll try and work on the tech. I see the, let's see. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll work with you on the technical stuff. Hey, Steven, welcome. If you Thank could say you. where you're where you're doing your project and tell us about it. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I have, I have, a, I have a, a slideshow to share with you. So let me just get that queued up. Can you all see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, I'm gonna be working in downtown Santa Ana to bring a little mini um, garden with uh, native California plants. I live in Southern California, uh, land acknowledgement towards the Tvanga and Kvit people. They have been the historical caretakers of this land. And um, I wanted to reroute the, <clears throat> the, um, the knowledge that there are native plants that we don't often see in our area. And uh, over the past few years, with the drought that has come, um, people have started to uh, landscape with those more, but there needs to be more awareness. And I see that recently we have come into a period of almost um, 
social climate change with the pandemic. So I'm li linking the way that um, the arts and culture scene of downtown Santa Ana is uh, being invited by uh, people like Ryan or myself into kind of like re-emerging and regrowth. Um, so I say, just as plants go through seasons of life, we too in our communities are looking to come out of a difficult and complex season. Using native plants that naturally partner with our local environment, the proposed container garden and installation will provide a co-creative display of plants paired with sculptural elements made of wood and sticks, holding written positive affirmation that link our thriving to theirs. Let's re-emerge into a renewing world. It's time to bloom, learning to see, learning to be, champions for growth. The mini garden installation will speak to where we have come from on a historical environmental level and into this past year, plus will be a visual display that people can learn from to see and identify what plants can support a renewal and rebirth of local flora and fauna in our own spaces. So I have um, done some art projects in downtown Santa Ana um, with a community. And so I feel like I have planted creative seeds there in the past. And so uh, at the corner of 2nd and Sycamore Street, I hope to plant this mini garden where I've done a project called Doors. This one was using a reclaimed sawdust that was dyed. Um, a gentleman from Guatemala, Aldo Fratti, came up with this concept. And we did it all over the community. And I did my um, uh, piece called um, Into Color uh, at Santa Ana. And then this is an installation I've done somewhere else with um, like regrowth, re rebirth with Plants and Rebel. The project I'm going to do coming up is not this extensive because this was with a massive team of people, um, but it will use native plants. And so I'm sharing images of some of those here. I worked with a woman named Marianne Taylor, who's the founder of Going Native Therapeutic Gardens and a woman named Katie Ryan, who is from Tree of Life Nursery which specializes in native plants. And these plants were selected to be uh, pollinator attractors. So they're gonna support local species, species um, of butterflies and moth and hummingbird. So you see the four hummingbirds that are in our area, Allen's, Anna's, Rufus and Black Chin. So mm. I'm not thinking that this is going to create like a massive garden, um, but if hummingbirds, moths and butterflies do come by, when they pollinate the flowers here, they're going to benefit other plants in the downtown area. And um, I will have a QR code, uh, QR code on the um, display where people can link to a website and see the different uh, species that this might benefit. And um, if you want to follow uh, the nursery with Katie Newman or Going Native with Marianne Taylor or myself, there's our websites. In addition, if you go on goingnative.net coming up, in a few weeks, um, Mary Ann's organization is going to be hosting a monarch butterfly expert. Um, she and his, her organization are very keen on helping that endangered species. So thank you for listening. And that's my presentation. I like the list of uh, those <laughs> plants. I might want to steal them for our national park. Um, any way to get that fun list you had? Sure. I can uh, I can get information from Ryan and send that to you. Sure. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's awesome, uh, Stephen, and that's so cool that you're working with uh, experts like Tree of Life Nursery, and uh, they're you know educating people and connecting people with how to plant local plants. And I also really appreciate uh, how good a job you do of um, you know, nature is everywhere, but you really have to put it, a frame on it and tell a story for a person to take notice. And I think you're such an expert at, at doing that. So really appreciate uh, your project. Um, Thanks. Priscilla, Thanks. yes, uh, Priscilla, I, I found the graphic you sent me and uh, hopefully did your friend make it in or do you want to go ahead? Oh, you're muted. Okay, yes, yes. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, it seems like Alonso is in the meeting. Hi, yes, yes. Hello. Welcome. I got in, thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks. Steal the show, Mexico and Southern California yes. together fast. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, 
so hi everybody i'm priscilla hernandez i live in santa ana and i'm an artist here i also do like landscaping um as a job and i'm involved in the arts in uh downtown santa ana and all over santa ana um so i was just really excited to hear about this uh this project this challenge um it's the first time I was involved in something like this, but it's pretty exciting. And um, what we came up is doing a mobile garden in downtown Santa Ana. So uh, the idea here is pretty much to inspire others just to grow food and edibles and uh, plants that are, you know, easy to grow um, and also very useful, right? So. Um, our idea was to build a ladder. So this is still in progress. I kind of found out like very last minute. So we're working in it on the idea of the ladder. Um, we're gonna be actually recycling a ladder, uh, putting a base on it with wheels. And uh, it's gonna have maybe like just four levels, but it's gonna have this type of boxes so we can uh, grow bigger plants the bigger, the, the better. And we're gonna have herbs in the bottom saying like uh, mint, uh, basil, um, something um, easy to grow like creeping rosemary. Uh, I have a lot of these plants at home. And I also know some people that work in the community gardens that can donate some of these plants. So we don't wanna waste a lot of money um, you know, but we just want to use the resources and really by contacting people, you know, around um, locally. So they can donate some plants. Um, like I said, the base will be those type of herbs that can grow low. Then uh, we'll probably have bigger something in the middle like um, cucumber. And we just wanted to do cucumber because it's something that people can eat raw. They can just, you know, grab it once it grows. And um, so we're like in a really good timing right now because I believe, you know, things are going to grow. And then during the summer and fall, there we will be uh, fruits available. Um, and then on the very top, we also want to include um, dragon fruit. So dragon fruit is a cactus and also grows well um, in the sun. So if it's gonna be getting direct sun, it's gonna be fine. And um, let me see here. Okay, so. Priscilla, could you mention a little bit about the different anymore. locations? Yes. Um, so yeah, so pretty much oh, that's the idea of that. And the idea of uh, watering the garden is by asking the different restaurants um, that are open to, to water it, to take care of it for a month. And um, pretty much all the, I'm asking everybody on the same side of the street, which is like starting here on Guadalajara, Taqueria, um, and the worst house one was like the first one. So every month we just move it, move it down a location and it's only like a small, very small block or like half a block from one restaurant to the other. So uh, I'm still in the process of talking to them. Uh, I already talked to a few and they're excited. They said, yeah, they'll water it, they'll be happy. And at the same time they can use um the plants that are there so if they want to use it in their drinks in their food um they can do that and um yeah i mean that's a, a pretty good uh turnout that we've had so far just from them um you know being being willing to water it it's a major part and other than that i'll be checking on it making sure like you know plants are healthy if i need to change any any plants um, I'm growing cucumber in my, in my yard. So I have a lot of cucumber, like I can always, um, replace plants and, and add, you know, nutrients and fertilizer. And, um, yeah, I don't know if you have any other questions. That's like basically the, um, the idea here, uh, we are going to present it on the 24th. So next Saturday, 
uh, will be pres presenting the project at um, probably Fourth Street Market. Um, I spoke with um, Alta Baja, which is right in front of uh, Fourth Street Market. So they're willing to uh, be part of it. And I might just be like outside, um, outside of the of the building so people they have like a little eating area outside and we'll present that um and yeah get people excited also we want to have a print out all the restaurants that are participating so as this moves everybody can see like learn about the project learn about the plants and actually that was alonso's idea as well um Sorry, I haven't introduced him. He's so he's an architect and a visual artist in uh, Mexico City, and um, he's actually worked together in many projects in doing landscaping. So um, he does amazing renderings, and he just is uh, helping me do that, but also having ideas because he's had experience. So. Um, that's an amazing idea because then all the restaurants can feel part of it and also people that walk by can understand what the project is about and what kind of plants uh, are in the planters and just get a little more interested about growing their own food yeah pretty much alonzo did you want to add anything oh yeah yeah i mean we, we're, we're still working on the on the structure you know how we are gonna get these stairs built? Uh, maybe we can get a one like used one, or maybe we will build it uh, out of uh, recycled wood. Uh, we we are still working on it, but but we're really excited to do it and to present it. Thanks for everything. Awesome. And we uh, have Ryan. Can I jump in? Just like I think it. it I, First of all, that's very good idea. It's very creative. I, I, I really I really like it, and I'm uh, I'm actually thinking about it as a as a feedback or as an idea. I don't know you think yeah. what is better, but I can imagine that it could be also part of the concept that uh, wherever like a restaurant has it somewhere, they, they I don't know how flexible it could be to change the plants also. So they actually make uh, actual use depending on what restaurant needs. If it's for I don't know, for cocktail bar, like they will probably need mints, coriander for like uh, other places. I don't know how flexible it could be, but it could be fun also if you can change this and then so it's usable by the respective restaurant or Yeah, that, that sounds like a good, something I can um, add as I'm talking to them. Totally, yeah, that sounds like a good idea and see what kind of herbs they would be interested in having. Mm -hmm. Great. We have a, we have also Helen. Helen, you want to have a comment question? Yeah, uh, just a quick comment from my experience. It's uh, so we've done lots of uh, urban gardens and public edible stuff here in Oslo, and our experience is that we have to be really mm -hmm. smart and selective about what we plant because it needs to be something that it's okay if people help themselves. So for example, like um, we don't have regular tomatoes and never have beef tomatoes, but we will have cherry tomatoes because if there's 10 tomatoes on a plant and someone has a plan for it, it's really, it's a pity if somebody takes eight of them, right? But if it's a cherry tomato plant and there's a hundred cherry tomatoes, people can take 80 and there's still some left, you know? So being strategic about picking things that people easily can, can harvest from. You know, having the the small snack cucumbers that will be quite prolific instead of waiting for the long ones to to develop, and these so that kind of also encourages people to to dare to taste if they can see that oh, I have a small cherry tomato that's going to be okay no one's going to notice so it just makes the the barrier to to interact a bit lower if you're strategic about that and then I also wanted to comment about the 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 former presentation. I thought it was really interesting that you brought up uh, yarrow, the plant, because I think it's a typical plant, a very hardy plant that can be found over half of the world. And I did a quick Google search and there's so much history about how it's been used for medicinal purposes. 
and how it was a part of the first aid, uh, first aid kit of Alexander the Great when he had his military marches throughout Europe. So there's, you know, so much story that can be built uh, and it's been used by, you know, everyone who was ever burnt on a, on a pole for being a witch. They were used, probably using yarrow for like home remedies. So it's, it's, it's an interesting plant because you can build so many stores and you can have so many workshops with it and you can have activities and you can use it for plant dyeing and simple home remedies and, and tell stories about it. Yeah, so it sounds like a cool project and it's gonna look awesome on the stairs. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, useful advice. And and uh, next in line, Ryan, uh, we have Denise Reynoso. Is she here? I see her. Uh, yes. I, I am here. My <laughs> 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 <A> little one. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me share screen. Oh, sorry. I think you should be able to share screen now because you're the co-host. Okay. One second here. Let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to... You're having a cute supporter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you talk in the meanwhile. <laughs> um, let's see. You're telling your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> is do you not see the share button or I do, that... but my oh, oh, okay. um it's telling me to change my settings. Oh. I'm trying to figure out. You want us to come back to you so you're not under yeah. the bed? Okay. Yeah, is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, that's no problem at all. Okay. Um, let's jump. Do you want, uh, can we jump over to Monica in uh, Pontiac? Are you guys ready to go? I don't know if they're in the, the over there. All right, last call for Monica right now. Otherwise, we'll go to Angel. Oh, there she is. She's alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Welcome, I'm, guys. Oh, I'm up to my Hello. Shit. Oh, there she is. Oh. Look, look. Hi. Here's our star. Hi, Monica. Sorry, we're in the middle. We had another meeting. We were balancing two here. Sorry about that. Um, do you just want me to go over what our, our program is? Yes, please. For our placement? Okay. Awesome. Can I share my screen? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we are um, doing something like we did last year. Um, uh, we did an Earth Day um, kind of think tank, um, placemaking think tank to kind of consider the, the, the pandemic and, and what placemaking mm, means so with all of that. And, and so we, this is our sort of and, um, our co-design board. And we, so we're just folks trying to bring in the elements of the nat of nature, co-design with nature of the theme um, that that everyone has set for this. We're really excited about that. And um, we will have some community um, development advocates here, our citizen district council. We're doing, um, I'm sorry, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so in between both things, but I'm, uh, let's see. We do a co-design process as we use a vision and game plan. Um, and we just have some of the elements. Melina, we have your, you wrote this um, cities after COVID, cities post COVID. Yes. Great, it's, it's great to see it back, coming back. It's, uh, it's uh, almost a year uh, since oh. I wrote that article, but. Yes, yeah, so we wanted to deep dive that 
and um, sort of look at your the element that you had around rooftops and children's Beautiful. playgrounds. And we have this concrete jungle here <laughs> in our downtown of Pontiac that we've worked. We, this is the Phoenix Center that we've worked on for like six years. It's um, it's a structure that was built um, 20 years ago. It was up for demolition. Um, that has that we were on the side of not demolishing it and trying to reconsider, you know, what does the plaza mean for community? And um, we have an empty downtown. We had an empty downtown pre-COVID. <laughs> and um, so we had have been on that kind of um, uh, talking point, I guess, of how do you get our community back to its downtown? And, and we have a history. We're in the wealthiest, one of the wealthiest counties of the country. Um, Oakland County, but yet our Pontiac, our city of Pontiac is the county seat, and it was sort of deeply mismanaged, um, a lot of segregation, a lot of extraction and, and bad real estate practices, all of the, all of the usual suspects um, have kind of visited our downtown over time, and so um, we just, we put this mock-up together about what would a an activated plaza look like. Right now it's it's empty um, and it just went through a deal. So we sort of looked at like all of the people that we've ran into over the years and and their little siloed ideas for what the what the center might be versus like a, a more holistic community oriented approach. Um, we have our, our Michigan Health and Human Services is the only um entity there that that occupies like half of this office tower um so anyway sorry about my com convoluted presentation here but um yeah we just want to think about these elements we would love if melina would join us <laughs> but if you um we're going to host our event from three to six on earth day and we'll be sharing that widely and, and Ryan and, and Tina and Madeline has said they would join us. Um, and we also have a bus, a bus depot is, is here as well. We did a um, community partnership program with our smart bus, which is the um, transportation authority. And um, there's a PhD thesis being written about our community engagement with them in, in 2017. And so she'll be there and, um, Anyways, we're just gonna gonna have a free flowing, open um, open conversation and and deep dive a number of these elements and try to um, we have a sticky note. This is all sticky note process and um, gather as much input and and create a really um, create an active live co design project that the placemaking networks and a number of other place um, organizations locally, hyper-locally, and with the placemaking networks, um, try to establish a co-design project. Maybe it will tie in with the American Rescue Plan and the Infrastructure Plan, who knows? <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you. I mean, we're looking forward to uh, check that out and the reflection yep. of it. I mean, I'm curious actually what will happen. Yeah. Uh, should we proceed towards, I, Ryan, I love how you present him. So I'll do the same, Angel. <laughs> the, 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 are you there? Yes, thank you. Yes. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is pronounced Angel in Bulgaria. <laughs> so I'm based in a small city here in uh, Bulgaria and I will sh share my screen to tell you a little bit more about the uh, our idea. So, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So, a little bit of context uh, for the last uh, in the last five years, um, it's becoming in a tradition uh, all of the street trees in Bulgaria to be uh, trimmed uh, like this. Uh, I'll show a little bit more photos. Um, and they are pruned in this uh, very aggressive um, way. 
which uh, I'm not sure if it is right for them and if they are going to be a wife again this uh, spring or summer. So if you take a look at this photo, you can uh, even um, miss that they are uh, like a lot of trees uh, here. So our idea is to put uh, on this, uh, this photos are for, from one street, which is uh, very important for the city. There is an um, entrance towards the city center. And in addition, there's a um, huge pedestrian traffic going uh, by. So uh, our idea is to chose to make some kind of uh, demonstration and place signs made of cardboard on all of these trees and all the signs um, are going to look like something like uh, this uh, with um, how to say ironic and uh, different uh, messages that we want to send uh, mainly to the uh, local municipality and the structure that is responsible for trimming uh, the trees. Uh, its name is uh, Equal Progress. Uh, <laughs> that's the name of the municipal structure, but yeah, we want to ask them if uh, they are thinking about our progress or our regress or whatever and if uh, they found find um, all this uh, timing uh, normal. And uh, we plan to do this uh, in the uh, very early hours in the morning, probably at uh, 4 or 5 a.m. So nobody see us and hang uh, these uh, cardboard signs onto the uh, trees. And we plan to do this uh, secretly and send the photos to local media and uh, see what's what's happened so yeah in fact that's it uh, i'll be very grateful if you have some feedback uh, regarding this idea so yeah thank you hello uh, yeah thank you i mean it's good to see revolutionary vibe around bulgaria or it's happening and there are some results already coming up from that i'm happy to see that project as well i don't know does somebody want to respond i think i saw that there is a question there by alex have you been able to get is that for for angel or for somebody else by the way uh, if you want to share, I think if not, that it's Gorilla Project. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Do they, have they ever had leaves on them, Angel? Has there ever been greenery on them, or are they just? Stick? Yes, of course. Yes. Oh, okay. They they were last uh, autumn, and yeah, usually this uh, this kind of trimming uh, happens during the autumn or the winter seasons. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's actually it's quite damaging way of trimming, and I know that uh, in a lot of cities of uh, across Europe, it's not allowed anymore to uh, cut the trees that way. The other techni techniques need to be uh, uh, deployed in order to you know keep the the size of the trees uh, uh, in the streets. But this is a quite a quite a radical way to do it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I know that this is this is a problem across many municipalities who just want you know uh, uh, lighter, quicker, cheaper solutions, but not in a good way. You know, it's <laughs> just like uh, the you know getting the uh, the maximum out of the maintenance budget. And uh, I think this is it's it's quite good to hear that also for the placemaker Earth we also have this bit more. Uh, let's say radical activism uh, actions. I really am um, really looking forward to uh, see what are the results, Angel. Uh, hopefully, hopefully everything will be okay and no one will get arrested during the action. <laughs> yes, I hope so, thank you. <laughs> yeah, great. I think it's cool that you're gonna go out and do it at night and all these signs are gonna appear. I was thinking that maybe you could also add in a few signs that invited people to get to know the tree like the tree could say, hello, my name is oak tree or hello, my name, whatever type of tree they are, or even say, I am 20 years old or 30 years old, help care for me or something like that. Yeah, yeah that's a great idea to make it more yeah. Uh, personal. And, yeah, yeah. well, there's, there's, I was trying to find, there's actually a, a new documentary. I think it's on Netflix about the history 
hidden life of trees or, or the intelligence of trees and how they really act as a family and how they communicate with each other and they help each other. And when one's hurting, they try to feed the other one. So that sort of humanizes the tree when you go to chop its arms off. Yeah, that book says that that basically those trees are in constant pain with those way they're being treated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that the, the, the trick is when you cut it drastically like this, uh, it will live on, but it will recover very slowly. So you don't have to cut it every year. And if you want to do it in a bit more, let's say, uh, um, I wouldn't say humane, but more tree tree friendly way. You need it. You need to trim it every little bit every year. But that it costs you a lot of manpower and, and money. So it's easier to you know do this, and then for two years you don't have to do anything, because the poor tree needs this time to recover. And that's it's quite uh, yeah, it's quite drastic uh, drastic way. And w another thing is of course. Uh, it really destroys the habitat for for birds, you know, because it's uh, the, the the new branches are going to uh, uh, grow very slow, and you know, no, you can't really expect that birds are going to uh, place any nests uh, soon there. So that's that's a pity. Yes. Thank you for sharing the perspective, guys. I think yeah, I just need to give a little bit of a like one word more because it's. Uh, I'm Bulgarian, so I know that there was a lot of uh, like uh, a lot of bad uh, maintenance for many years, and now it's good that uh, like the work that Angel is doing, and of course, like bigger than this Greenpeace Bulgaria, and and we have green people in the uh, in the parliament for first time uh, that uh, share pictures going with public transport, hopefully with bikes to parliament, which is kind of it gives us hope that this kind of actions have some audience as well. So good luck with that, Angel. And uh, I would like to invite Rosina. Uh, I want to ask you, Rosina, do you want me to share the screen still or uh, you would like to do it? I'm going to, well, hi everybody. Good to be here and um, thank you, Todor. I'm going to attempt to do it myself. Um, and if it doesn't, then I'm going to ask you to share it, if that's okay. That's perfect. Just. Yes, I, I first need to make you a, a co-host. Just a second, you yeah, are a co-host now. Yeah. You should uh, you should be able to share your screen now. Should be able to share my desktop, possibly. I hope. Okay, so I'm just going to very quickly um, do the slideshow. Um, let's see that this works. Okay. So I'm uh, obvious, I'm running Bids Belgium, which is an NGO here in Brussels, and I'm living in the one of the, the municipalities, the 19 municipalities on the northwest side of Brussels that you see here. And we're living also next to a very leafy park that you see here with a huge kind of basilica, which is one of, I think it's the fifth largest art deco largest. Um, um, basilic and church, um, I think, in the world, so they say. And so we're used to a lot of participatory projects. Um, a few years ago, we had this wonderful crowdfunded Bar Elisa in the middle of the park that we all contributed to and worked on. And what I'll be now sharing with you is next to this park, uh, forgive the, the actual, um, sorry, the clarity, because I just did this very quickly as a quick outline. We're doing an urban street design project where we're going to be engaging um, youth schools and we'll be participating also in this project with the municipality, also with the cultural centres. Now in Brussels and in Belgium, we've got three languages. We have a very complicated system of three regions in Belgium and several governments. And so we're really engaging the French speaking schools and the, and the, the Dutch speaking schools. And the idea with this street design is um, it's participatory, it's co-design, but it's also really teaching the kids, engaging them um, and I guess involving them in the urban design that they will decide themselves what kind of furniture, what, how is the street going to look? But also whilst we do it, we teach them about the SDGs. 
and we sort of go through this kind of alphabet process and also doing it multilingual. So we will be doing English, French and Dutch and really also getting them involved in the biodiversity and choosing plants, choosing edible plants, choosing the, you know, really understanding about nature in the city and also about inclusivity, because this is an element that is incredibly important for us, that also we will be involving schools um, with kids with intellectual disabilities, getting all the children together to really understand what is it to create accessibility for elderly people, for people with neurodiversities, for people with disabilities. What does that mean? And how can they together co-create and now I do this also with one of the, um, the sort of uh, spin-off program that we have in BIDS, which is called Analog to Digital. And the process and methodologies that we'll be using actually is um, during this COVID period, because it's still the Easter holidays here just now, we will be post um, Easter holidays doing an online project where the kids will actually engage in um, using creative tools but also digital tools so painting drawing clay making working from the 2d world to the 3d world so they'll also go into minecraft and the gaming and so we have these kind of um, leaflets where it's also really visible and easily read by the french speaking and the dutch speaking children and this street also there's a part of it that has recently become um part of the feminized street name strategy of the municipality. So there's a square at the end of it that will be called the Bronte sisters after the, the of course, the literary sisters. Um, and so we've really, as I say, co-designing it. It was initially bottom up, but getting the cultural center. So it's really design led innovation using creativity and then also having the municipality on board. So the first stage will be for kids to do and design at school or with their parents. And then post COVID, we will be gathering kids together to actually physically make furniture, to physically see the street, to envision how their little designs and ideas can actually work together. Now, at the moment, what we've done, sorry, this is a bit the wrong way there, but I mean, the street is partially pedestrianized so it's really the bit on the left there. And so the kids can really kind of also, as we have a very small municipality, they can also come and visit the street and, and uh, as I say, work on that, work on that together. And actually really that's it. And as some of the projects we've done before, as I say, it was really working with kids on, you know, both inside and outside. So they have a chance to really develop that creativity and the digital aspect. And as I say, it's so important that they work together, they understand about diversity, about community living together. The highest population demographic in this municipality is actually Romanian people. And so also it's, it's really, we're, we're making a conscious effort to really engage all the different communities so they work together. And that's it, that's what um, our project of Design Your Street is about. And so we're incredibly excited about it and we can't wait for some of the restrictions to kind of um, be lifted. So thank you for listening, and um, that's our project. Great. I, I think it's very it's very interesting. It's always very valuable also to work with kids. So I think it's a great in the war in general. And uh, the, just the last thing uh, uh, is a question: Is the language some kind of a problem? Because I I didn't get that uh, grip or. Well, it won't, the language, to be honest, yes, it's not a problem, but it's just, you know, there are two different systems. There's a French speaking system, and then there's a Dutch speaking system. And normally, they generally stay in the silos. And so what we're making a conscious effort of, so for example, my kids are in the Dutch speaking system. So, you know, we're making a conscious effort to involve the whole community. We want to involve both the French speaking schools and the Dutch speaking schools. So, so there, it's not so much that it's a, it's a problem, but it's always a challenge that has to be considered. But Brussels also has this multilingualism policy and strategy, um, you know, also to have the English, we're obviously a very international city. Um, and I also speak uh, Dutch as well. So there's not an issue to bring a different um, people together. Hence why we really engage with the cultural centers so they're fully involved in that process as well.
Okay. Yeah, great. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll follow up on that one and we'll hope to see more uh, probably uh, some somewhere in May, in May or whenever you have. More yeah, advanced. we're hoping okay. for restrictions to be lifted then, so thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think De Dennis Reynoso, uh, are you uh, okay now to, to go, to get okay. back to you? Let me try this again. Thank you for your patience. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so let's see. Great, yeah. Okay, you can see it now? Yes. yes okay. all good. Awesome. So um, I'm Denise Reynoso. I live in downtown Santa Ana as well. Um, and the project that we're going to do is at my condominium complex. Um, we're a very large condominium complex here in downtown Santa Ana and it's called Town Square. We have 318 units, so it's pretty big. And our, our community is in need of a lot of TLC. So I was trying to think of something that everyone can be involved in and um, just kind of, you know, everyone can take part in, take care of. So we decided on doing a community garden. Um, our goal is to develop a sense of pride to bring everyone together. Um, so we have this this spot in between the two areas. Um, our complex is divided into like two um, large areas, 600 and 700 Third Street. So we have this nice open space in between both buildings. So it's a really perfect location for everyone to have access to. And so our idea is to uh, build a garden in between. And um, and we also were able to incorporate a grow wall. So we're gonna do that on the back wall of this area. And um, we chose a community garden because there's a lot of people that like to, um, you know, they have little, little plants on their porch and there's not a whole lot of space for us to plant anything. So this will kind of, give everyone a sense of ownership and also just something to do that will help beautify the location. And um, so we're going to do the community garden this area and then also the grow wall in the back. So the first phase we talked to the landscapers to see um, how we can make it a, a little bit easier to put in the beds. Um, so I, I, I created a committee and we reached out to the landscapers and there's a lot of, there's actually dead stumps in this area. And um, we tried to see if, if we move the shrubs, if we can save them, but they said um, they're all too old. So we couldn't do much with them because we were trying to move them to the side. So they're gonna do that um, and take out the vines. And that way we can, we're gonna construct the beds ourselves and then um, put them in the middle. We're gonna do four rectangular beds and um, there's already a sprinkler system there, so that'll help with, with watering. And then, um, so sorry, my baby wants to talk. <laughs> and so we plan on doing um, veggies like kale, peppers, um, tomatoes. Um, so I appreciate the conversation that we talked, I, I was hearing earlier about the cherry tomatoes and, um, you know, we also want things like cilantro, basil, um, so things that people can use. Um, and then also, you know, just other plants and flowers uh, that people will want to take part in taking care of, um, because we're all going to be taking care of this area together. It's our shared space. We also want to add benches um, because we noticed that it's really sad in this area. There was a lot of trash. Just it's, it's this picture looks much nicer than it looks up close. <laughs> um, so that way people can use the space. Um, the children can, you know, sit there. Um, we were given a lending library for our area. So I have a picture of it. Um, this is phase one where they started taking out the, they're gonna start taking out the shrubs and the, uh, the dead stumps. And let's see. Um, so we have our, we're going to put our lending library in that space um, just because we thought it would be cute to have the kids have an area where they can sit on the benches or on the grass and they could 
you know, read a book or, you know, talk to each other. And so just a nice little space for the families and the kids. Uh, we also want to have them paint rocks and um, just kind of make it their own space. So that's pretty much our idea for Town Square um, here in downtown Santa Ana. Wow, Janita, that's so cool. You don't often see the lending library and the gardens combined together. So that's such right. a great idea. We have some questions in there also, Ryan, uh, like for where are the funds coming from and how is your maintenance organized? Uh, I don't know if you would like to answer this. Oh, sure. So uh, we applied for a grant and so we'll be using the funds from there. And then the maintenance is going to be um, just from the homeowners. Um, so everyone, we've started a committee for this and so everybody's going to pitch in um, and get involved. So we've been putting out flyers for our work day, which we're having next Saturday, the 24th. And um, I've just been touching base with all the homeowners that like to garden and uh, people have been trying to kind of do little things here and there in the area. So those people I've been reaching out to them for our designated space that we can have to garden. Yep. Great. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, I would also uh, uh, emphasize the comment of uh, Tina to, to photo document this process. I think it's very important uh very often yeah we can yeah. forget this but actually that's the beauty of it and, we definitely will, and we're yeah. looking forward actually to yeah. see uh some photos and i think after the session also we'll send you an email with where we're collecting this i mean that we can also during the process share command you, and so on could you also tell them about the work party and how you're turning the chore into food fun and food Yes, so on the 24th, uh, Ryan's helping us have a work party. Um, so we just want to get, you know, as many volunteers as we can, because again, we're doing this all on our own. And so, you know, we're having pizza press, bring some pizzas and just kind of uh, reward our volunteers and get as many people out here as we can to help us. Excellent. Your your assistant needs some attention, I think. Uh, <laughs> okay, I think uh, I think Tina Vilfan and Jeff uh, Ro, uh, they didn't. They're not here, right? Well, no, I think Jeff, Jeff is, he appeared. Okay. Right. So, yeah. Jeff, are you there? He Jeff? is not having his audio on. Uh -oh. But I can make Jeff co-host. It's only that he's not present. That's a little bit of the issue. He's not there. He's just. Yeah. Um, he's, I mean, he's having some trouble lately. Okay. I don't know okay. if you want to go on to Tina Govan yeah. and Ali, and then. We can yeah, that, that's what I was going to propose. If you want Tina, maybe you go ahead and we see if uh, Jeff is off his okay. technical issues. Okay. So I, I, I just have very, sh very short. Um, presentation um, and uh, let's see here, I'll, I'll present. So um, just had a couple of thoughts about um, the, this project. And one was just walking around my town. We talk so much about planting trees and which is great, but there's so many trees that are already grown and you know some of them you know 100 years old that are suffocating because of ivy so um it just is sad even on our greenways we walk around and it's basically forests of ivy colored covered trees and uh it's they kill the tree and it, it's an easy fix in a way you just cut it at the bottom to save the tree some people don't recognize that this is not a good thing they think oh it's green <laughs> but this is really a bad situation so i i reached out to um the local parks and rec folks and got in touch with this awesome woman just named lee at bergasa and i ordered on amazon just a couple um clippers and a saw, and she gave me a, a quick training 
in um, how to cut the vines off. And she's gotten in the mail now these um, Habitat Heroes uh, brigade badges that are going to be mailed to me and so I can enlist other people in the city to also cut down these um, cut off these ivy uh, vines just as you see them so now that I've got this uh, official badge coming and I can enlist other people so I did my first tree the other day on a walk and you basically cut off a swath of the vines and it, it really is amazing um, you know the differences it can make because the the trees that are covered with ivy are, are huge and majestic and they're just being um killed and once you start looking for this ivy you'll see it more and more and and especially in the summer when you cut off uh it from its source at the bottom it dies very quickly it browns up and then once it browns up it can be taken off or just left but you save a tree that's already in place versus planting new trees that take forever to grow, but both are good, but why not be, be better stewards of what we have? So that's one, uh, one quick project. And another is just my street and trying to build community on my street by planting the verge, which is that area between the sidewalk and the, and the road that's basically city property, but people, it's in that in-between zone, so it's in front of people's houses. And I, this is something I started last year, and I know this has been done in many places before, but um, it's, it's now in its second year, so it's kind of interesting to see it over time. When I first was doing it, uh, th these are some pictures from last year, and I planted just some wildflower, native wildflower seeds, and watched them grow um, around our streets sign and uh, this is my neighbor uh, Jeff <laughs> who's very tidy and he wasn't sure he liked them even though it wasn't really on his property but it, he, he kind of cut them down prematurely but now he's softened up a little bit more it was such a joy to kind of walk by these every day and um, got a lot of good comments and so now and uh, and also was able to plant in, in front of some other neighbors yards and this year I'm enlisting some younger people. This little boy down the street has helped me plant in front of his house. And uh, he and his mom are maintaining that bit. So it's fun just to see it kind of um, build and, 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 and give an excuse for me to connect with my neighbors. And this woman, uh, Lisa Berry, he lives across the street. Even though Jeff is a little suspect of, of the whole thing, um, she's agreed to come help maintain these patches at the top of the street. And um, she's also watering them routinely. So it, it's, it's wonderful to have other people get on board and, uh, and see it grow literally not just during the spring and summer but over the years and 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 maybe in a few years this whole strip will be planted with wildflowers and this year's um flowers are just now beginning to sprout and so it's it's fun because i walk by it every day and see it all the time and it gives us something to talk about with the neighbors so that that's it for me Thank you. Um, well, it, it's it's great to see. Like this is this is uh, hands on, uh, really what you're doing. I think I think it's great to see this kind of project also and ideas and pushes. I mean, for us, it's a great excuse doing this placemaker challenge actually to do exactly this kind of things. Yeah, it's fun, yeah. and and also I met this woman who works for the parks department, who's super cool, and now we have a relationship. So it's just about you know making relationships and. Yeah. There's a question there that I would like to ask you, actually. Do you have any issues with the city officials? With the flowers? The flowers, they don't care. And, but the, um, but, but the, the other one is sanctioned. So I have this badge. And so with the ivy, they want you to do it. And they say any city property or trees, they welcome you to do it. And so what's fun is that now when I walk, take walks, I do it every day. I just carry these uh, tools and I saw uh, Ivy when I see them. It's supposed to be city property, but sometimes I go into private property, but if, <laughs> if, if it's not occupied. But um, the, uh, but you know, the city loves it and they want me to, to grow a whole army around it to, to cut the, tree, the, the Ivy off. 
Because if you start looking around, I don't know if you have the same problem where you live, but ivy, it, it just, it, it consumes these big trees and it's very easy to see from a distance. The rewilding ranger. Uh, yes. You're promoted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for sharing that. Uh, yeah. uh, Ryan, I think, uh, I don't know if Jeff uh, fixed his issues. Maybe let's try again. Jeff, are you here at Not all? More issues now than before. I don't think he's, he's here. So, yeah. so if you want, you go ahead. Okay. Uh, and hi, guys. Um, Ryan Smaller here with Placemaking US, and I also work with Long Beach Fresh in Long Beach and the Downtown Santa Ana Business Improvement District in Downtown Santa Ana, California. And I really enjoyed this Placemake Earth this year. I really, uh, I like the topic and I went to new places. I met new people. I took lots of photographs. I, I really had an amazing time and I helped um, catalyze some folks doing projects. So I'm involved in a lot of projects for placemakers. So um, excited to share that with you. Uh, first of all, what I wanted to do last year and ended up doing this year was with the business improvement district is we made a, a grant, a mini grant so that people in the community, uh, instead of us doing the project, you know, they could submit their projects, uh, receive funding, receive any advice, receive support, um, with the help of the, the business district. And so um, this was a simple like online application that people filled out and they were invited to then come and participate with all of us at Placemake Earth. And so five or six people um, submitted really great project ideas. You heard some of them today, like Priscilla's with the stairway garden, um, Denise with the, the townhome uh, square and, and uh, garden project and um, we heard one other person, I'm blanking on who else we heard from, but uh, I'm a little too deep in this. <laughs> but uh, that that was a super, super successful and really excited to be a part of those projects. Oh, Stephen, of course, it was Stephen Homestead. Um, and then in Long Beach, I'm excited because, oh, I don't know where this went. Hold on, sorry. In Long Beach, I'm excited because I helped work with the food movement to catalyze some projects. And so in particular, um, this project was very cool, is very cool, where at the uh, North Long Beach farm stand, which is that fire station, or, or North Long Beach Victory Garden, which is that farm stand I showed previously and that Jeff Rowe in Long Beach is involved in, um, we built a garden there previously, and now what we're doing is we're building, working with the local artists and building a farm stand so that we can uh, have donation-based produce. And so um, we uh, worked with this artist, Amy Tanaka, uh, and she designed this concept for a farm stand uh, with donation-based produce and information about monthly events and uh, uh, there's a, a side with seed packs that people can get and her brother had happened to just buy this really strange awesome garden bed that he didn't want anymore and so uh, we're using this as the base and some Italian casks of, of wine, uh, wood, wood casks of wine will be the, the um, containers for the food and we have some work parties coming up so that um, you know Amy is a mom of two in the neighborhood and her everybody build this all together and she's just more going to direct the effort uh and so we're really excited about this project uh oh and we're naming the the farm stand phil's farm stand after one of the the really community guys who just showed up from the beginning and helped this project uh the the farm develop from the beginning and now he's starting to you know, um, get a little older and not able to show up as much. And so we're really excited to memorialize him with that. And then I couldn't let you guys have all the fun and I wanna do my own project, of course. And so I was actually, you know, out exploring, looking at things and I was at some crazy garden store looking at kinetics and uh, rock sculptures and all these different things. And what really I fell in love with, and oops, I want to make sure I'm sure my audio, um, what I really fell in love with and enchanted me was the...
the wind chimes. And so I really like like sound baths and I uh, love working with trees and, and co-designing with trees and bringing attention to, to nature and thought that uh, that would be a great project. And so um, I um, went on to chimetime.com <laughs> for all your chime needs. And I um, purchased several wind chimes. And what I ended up uh, really focusing on was purchasing wind chimes that um, connected with pieces of the landscape, the urban landscape that maybe aren't there anymore. And so we have a Chinatown that was burned to the ground uh, by the city officials. And we're working, Tina and I and Madeline and others on a, a long-term memorial project. But in the meantime, there were these jade um, wind chimes. And so I was I'm gonna install these at the site. And it kind of preambles uh, what we're doing there. And then there's all these, there's a giant flock of like a thousand parrots that comes through our downtown every night at like 5 p.m. And they're very loud and they're very awesome and they're famous and they're the, the unofficial symbol of our city. And so they had these um, uh, parrot based bamboo uh, ones. And so I got a couple of those and I'm going to hang these on the, a tree that our founder climbed in the. 18, I think 60s on his 50th birthday. And so that there's a sort of an envisage of this symbol and something fun over there. And then also um, this year we had a real tragedy during, um, you know, all of the civil unrest this year in America. And uh, we, a historic building, one of our nationally re registered historic buildings was burned to the ground in an act of arson. A uh, very, very uncommon event, and it was a church. And so now this, there's basically a big hole in the ground at this site. And so I found these uh, ones that sort of are reminiscent of uh, church bells. And so I'm going to put these over there at that site. And so. Uh, I'm really having a lot of fun with this idea. It's really fun to experiment with sound and taking back some of the peace and um, and really um, anchoring some of the good sort of spirits and history uh, with just these little actions. And you know, they may disappear very quickly. Um, they this may lead to something else. Uh, it's very much an experiment and a low cost something and low impact. And so, really excited to just have a little fun with with that one myself. Oh, thank you, Ran. I think uh, this was quite inspiring. And uh, the website, what was it? Uh, Chimetime.com probably have to give you some percentage for the next purchases in the next days because people are excited to buy now and to do it as well. I mean, there is one question for you, I think, uh, that uh, about the farm stand. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand correctly, but whether the production and the seeds are free to people who come to your events. Yes, yeah, so the seeds will be free. Um, the concept of the farm, so this 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 site where where the farm stand is, um, is a um, community learning garden. So people can participate by learning there. We also have a monthly crop swap where you can share produce, and then this farm stand specifically will be for donation based uh, sales. So it might be like you, know, you pay a dollar and get a cabbage or something like that. Um, but it would be very low cost, affordable, and I'm sure if anyone was in need, they would distribute, you know, um, the food to them. It's it's not primarily an income-based thing. It's more about uh, creating another layer of engagement and food distribution because a lot of the food sits there behind the fence and, and people can't get at it uh, without this mechanism. All right. Okay. Thank you for sharing. I think, uh, I don't think that, uh, I think, We'll stop hoping for Jeff, right? I think he's gone. Uh, well, that leaves me the last then. Uh, the same as Ryan, I, I feel like, uh, and as Tina, I think uh, this kind of initiatives uh, for me personally are also an excellent excuse to, uh, to hack yet another place in the neighborhood. Uh, so what I 
And I, of course, I don't want to let the fund to be only for uh, that I'm excluded from the fund. So I don't know. I can you just give me a sign if you see my screen? Because uh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I was actually not having straightforward idea two weeks ago. I was I was just I just know that I had this corner on the streets that I really uh, feel like there is not uh, it's not used well. It's a it's it's a kind of a program that the city start putting along this street. Uh, a lot of these small spots that are supposed to be, um, I don't know, attractive, I guess. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit bad screenshot, but uh, it's that street uh, in Stavanger, this Norway, um, that uh, they try to transform little by little. So there is a little, this is my corner, this is my house. So little by little, they were uh, trying to put some spots to invite social life. And uh, somewhere it works better than another. Then my corner, I don't think it works that well. So I was feeling like that I will hack it with some kind of uh, planting and some kind of structure into the planters. Um, though after that, I saw, I saw uh, while I was discussing with some of you, uh, Tina Vufan in particular in Copenhagen, she uh, noted me to that uh, idea that uh, like people are doing, it's an organization, but basically they start putting wildfires in, in uh, next to the trees. And there was, I, I had suddenly the idea that of course, why don't do something similar, but also uh, try to do it in every possible uh, place. So uh, I was been since then photographing little spaces around, the, around my neighborhood that uh, I'm marking as spots to, to do, like to plant something. Uh, and also clean them up a little bit, I guess. So it's a very simple idea, very, I mean, very, um, you can say silly in a way, but I think it really would like to experiment with that and uh, try to, uh, okay, and the second part of it, I will just come to a minute, but try to interact with these uh, uh, curves and these spaces. And the second thing that kind of came together for me is that uh, for quite some time, I'm also thinking of experimenting with seed bombs. Uh, I, I, I participated once, I made some seed bombs once, but I, I, I really would like to master this process as a, as a kind of a tool. Uh, so this weekend, I'm going to focus on that. And then on top of this, I'll kind of combine. So I'll throw some bombs around myself uh, and I'll try to invite the community also to do it, but in a kind of a subtle way by uh, getting back to this street and the small spots along the street that are uh, engaging with social life, uh, like that they try to invite people uh, to do some social activities there. I will also distribute these bombs, design little boxes and uh, distribute these bombs uh, around. So arm the neighborhood and uh, like they can throw also uh, wildflower seeds all around. I don't know uh, what exactly would come up with this, but I, I just uh, I just wanted to kind of do a mild interaction with my uh, immediate surroundings that I can monitor closely and probably play around with inviting more people to work on the biodiversity in the city and the bee habitats. So yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do and that what I'm going to get dirty with. Um, awesome. uh, we, I don't know if there is questions I didn't follow guys, but uh, I mean, feel free to reflect as well. Uh, Victor shared some very interesting photos of using tree cuttings to make bunkers and different structures. So reutilizing some of those uh, branches. Mm. Yeah, but, but 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 actually about flower bombs, I I'm interested. Uh, I've not really heard them heard well, uh, or, or how how you actually make them, how the recipe for flower bombs. <laughs> I guess there are different recipes, but in more general, I mean, some, I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm not that experienced with that. But uh, I mean, of course, you you have some kind of uh, fertilizers, clay, and seeds, but you also can add, I guess, different things. I I'm sure in this group here, there are more better people than me to describe it even better, but uh, 
Yes, so that's a brilliant strategy because what happens is is you're putting a bunch of seeds and you're just throwing them into spaces and then where where there's ripe uh, ground for them to take hold, that's where they'll grow. And so um, what some people do is they do that as a first step to find out where the natural verdant areas are because if you see the, the area like that randomly, then you'll start to see where the life is and where to build from. So it's a very, uh, very good tool, Todor. Yeah. yeah, it's exciting to see uh, flowers pop up in these, what you think are dead spaces that you don't even <laughs> look at. I think actually Madeline uh, posted a photo of just putting seeds in the cracks of these concrete, of the sidewalk and having flowers pop up unexpectedly along a walk. So that's always like such a joyous thing yeah. to see that color come up where you think it, everything is dead. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I see we... the comment here, sorry, uh, by, yeah. by Helen, because I would like to ask you, like uh, you, you said to use cut, literally instead of clay, uh, where do you get it from? <laughs> do, do you have a, uh, like, should I just use cut owners uh, in the neighborhood? Just, or? just in the supermarket, you know, the okay. bags with the uh, cat litter. Uh, oh, the, the, there's this cat sand, straw. Yeah this kind of straw thing for ah, the cats. okay not not straw but it's, oh. it's it's in a big bag and it's it's uh cat sand or something but yeah oh. the cheapest brands have nothing but clay in them mm -hmm. if you buy the expensive brands they will have silicone and perfume and god knows what shit but the cheap brand read on the back and they, they will say pure benton it's clay okay and that's, it's easier to get. I mean, it's pandemic times. I'm sure none of us can go shopping, looking in 10 different shops to look for something, right? <laughs> and it's cheap and you don't have to buy like a massive block of, of like ceramic clay, which is usually yeah. what else we would get. So it's easy to buy it cheap, but you have to read the, the ingredients label on the back. I should check your web, like on your website. You don't have your action like that? Because no, can... uh, we don't have it there, but we've, we've, a few years ago, we tested out several uh, recipes for seed bombs, and we found that there were several that were talking about like packing. But I think it depends a lot on the climate you live in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what might work in California may not work in in Norway, where yeah. rain is more our challenge than drought, for example. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's Google it. There's tons of recipes on the internet, but then. Out of all these recipes, look for one that has like cat sand or cat litter sand as a core ingredient. Yeah, okay, thank you. Actually, this is very useful uh, uh, input for me. Thank you, Helen. Uh, and I think this is where we should round it up, guys. Uh, the session was planned to be one hour and a half, so we are e extremely close to that. <laughs> uh, and just to summarize, so where we're at right now is we've just heard from placemakers around the world as to what you guys are working on and testing for Earth Week next week. Uh, the projects that we're working on are extending on through throughout and they're part of bigger changes. So it's really exciting that we've all been able to connect and focus on this topic together and really experience and see a little bit of e each other's environments. Uh, legal frameworks, uh, funding uh, potential, and approaches to working with our community to create awesome places that co-design with nature, that help our climate. Um, I saw a lot of our work that we presented today was informed by presenters that we had uh, who had shared ideas with us, expertise, um, and not just this year, but last year as well. So very exciting to see that we're learning together that our projects are continue to happen and continue to evolve and combine and be powerful and excited for your guys's collective impact next week. And then after that, we'll be coming back together to wrap up and really see what everybody did and what were the impacts and stories and lessons learned and uh, really congratulate each other because this is fabulous work you guys are doing and it really should be accoladed and appreciated locally, but also from people around the world who you're showing today. So I really appreciate your time and being with us and sharing this information 
so that we could all see it and learn from it. And I know several connections were made because I've been sending emails back and forth of people giving each other ladders and volunteering at each other's garden now. So this is really great. And make sure you photo document your project as it goes forward so we can all see it. Yeah. Yes, I would uh, really urge to do that because as uh, Ryan said, uh, we are going to uh, uh, have the action on the next weekend and then afterwards we were going to look back in the retrospective what those actions were and what have we learned, how far did we go with Placemaker Earth uh, Day uh, this year. So it's important to, you know, have something flashy to show and don't forget to use the, the hashtag place make earth because we want to splash it also around uh, across uh, uh, Instagram and other social media. And uh, yes, that's, uh, I think we, uh, we can uh, come up to a closure of the third webinar. I am also very happy to see that uh, this steady amount of people uh, being the audience at, at the webinars and, uh, you know, following the whole action. I would like to thank to all the speakers and also to all the veterans of uh, Placemaker Earth <laughs> webinars this, uh, uh, this year. And uh, yes, we are really looking forward to the, to the actions and I hope you will have a great and a successful weekend for the Placemaker Earth. Thanks a lot. And I'm going to wrap up the live, uh, the live, um, the live stream. Thank you.